Hey, this C4 Corvette owner is gonna race this C8 Corvette. Is the C8 twice the car of my rad C4? We'll find out in this seat of the pants review of the C8 Corvette as we get some hot laps at the Dream Racing Las Vegas experience. Oh my goodness gracious! Welcome to a special episode of Retro Cars Forever. My name is Brad, and you all know how much I love my fourth generation C4 Corvette. But as a Corvette fan, I've been itching to drive the controversial new mid-engine C8 ever since it was announced. And today, I finally get to drive one here. Located in Las Vegas Motor Speedway is the Dream Racing Experience. Inside the bank's NASCAR oval is this infield road course, a 1.2 mile nine turn playground, where anyone with a driver's license and a bit of cash can join in the fun. I'll go over the pricing rundown at the very end of this video, where I'll also be giving my review of the Dream Racing Experience itself. I'll tell you right now that one huge plus of Dream Racing is their unrivaled selection of cars. They even have an Aston Martin, which is my wife Athena's pick for today because, well, she's a big James Bond fan, so she accepts no substitutes. Now, a bit of a confession. While I'm a veteran of hustling my C4 along canyon roads, I'm not exactly what you'd call a professional racing driver. In fact, my track experience is limited to the following. I once raced a sprint car on dirt. There's a whole other video about this on my channel if you wanna see how that went. I raced a Ferrari F430 at a different driving experience at a different track years ago. And I once raced a Miata ND around a parking lot course with Adam Carolla as my navigator. Yeah, man. But thankfully for noobs like Athena and I, the dream racing experience includes some helpful guidance before you take the wheel. Your party will get a two lap tour of the course as passengers in one of their bigger cars, in our case, a Maserati Levante. An instructor will get you up to speed, at speed, with pointers regarding the proper racing line, as well as shifting and braking points. This is super helpful knowledge because the track layout is a challenge. Every turn is unique and the racing line takes some studying if you want to be fast. Okay, I feel smarter already. Let's try the C8. This will be my track weapon for today. And just like my Corvette, it's armed with the Z51 sports package. In this generation, Z51 means the brakes are larger, the suspension is tightened, and an aggressive front splitter and rear wing are added for more downforce. Yes, it has the Corvette logo on its beak, but for Corvette traditionalists like myself, there's a lot that's alien with the C8. This is the first production Corvette to have its engine located behind the driver. The new doorstop silhouette could belong to any number of European exotics. Sitting inside for the very first time, it doesn't remind me of Corvettes I'm used to either. The cabin materials are shockingly nice. Where'd all the cheap plastic go? But for retro car lovers like myself, the most difficult change to stomach is the lack of a true manual transmission. The only gearbox offered is a dual clutch eight speed flappy paddle automatic. Without a clutch pedal in this new car, my left foot won't know what to do with itself. But thankfully, my instructor, Corey, is here to help me figure out this newfangled machine. I'm curious to know, does Dream Racing modify these cars in any way, or is this a stock C8? Stock, because a lot of customers, they come out and they want to purchase the vehicles, and this is what you get. There's a good tip for you guys. If you are interested in buying a C8, it's so hard to actually get in one. They're in such high demand. This might be your best way to actually test drive one, especially on a track. I want to try to set a goal for myself here, okay? okay? What's a good lap time in this car? Anything close to a minute for your first time okay. is what you should be looking for. All right. So we have five laps to try to hit a minute. Yeah, fire it up right there. Ooh, that's nice. Okay, let's drive. Here's highlights of my five lap quest for a minute or under lap time in the C8 Corvette. And you can roll right onto the track, man. You're all set. Keep easing into it. You're oh. going to it down to the right, and then you're going to start to accelerate all the way out left. No gas yet, no gas, let it turn. Yep, yep, yep. And now power here. 
right here. Come in tight, wait on the throttle. Now gas. There you go, use the left a little more. Now that the adrenaline has worn off, I can give you my proper thoughts on this new Corvette. Clearly, a lot has changed in the decades since my C4 was made. Hell, I'm still mourning the loss of pop-up headlights, or the signature four taillights and distinct pods instead of having them all squished together in a non-distinct blob like this. But those are details. What has completely transformed the C8 is the new engine location. Yes, there are expected performance gains from this shift to the rear. But what I didn't expect was how this move flips the script on how a Corvette feels and drives. Traditionally, Corvettes are known for having massive hoods and a seating position that's so far back you're nearly sitting on the rear axle. While that makes it easy for your butt sensors to gauge what the rear tires are doing, it's difficult to get a sense of what the distant front tires are up to. And with that huge hood, visibility looking forward isn't great either. And with that heavy engine weighing down the front wheels, you'll either need a lot of steering boost that sacrifices road feel, or steering that's straight up heavy like it is in my car. The C8 changes all of that. With the engine moved back, the cockpit has now moved forward. Suddenly, you are completely engaged with what the front tires are up to. The steering is incredibly light, but because it needs less boost, it still feels direct. And the view forward is expansive and immediate, just like a jet fighter. The downside of sitting further forward is it's now harder to sense what the back tires are doing. This is probably why the C8 is engineered more towards understeer, where the front tires lose grip before the back tires do. Again, this is the exact opposite of my C4 and other classic Corvettes, which tend to be more tail-happy. While that can be fun at times, C4s can certainly be twitchy in the rear. The C8's dual-clutch transmission is also idiot-proof, but still surprisingly satisfying. Pull the trigger on the shift paddle, and it fires into the next gear as quickly as a rifle shot. You don't even have to lit up off the gas. So while I wouldn't call the C8 better or worse than older Corvettes, I will say it's a completely different flavor, and one that I liked a lot more than I thought I would. Everything just makes sense. In my C4, it took me a full year of driving to feel truly comfortable at speed. In the C8, I felt instantly at home, enough to push the car for a decent time in just a few laps. The C8 is effortless, while a C4 is effortful. Sometimes you want the ease and convenience of a digital playlist, and other times you want that old school analog experience. Both are valid and exceptionally fun in the right circumstances. Ultimately, I think people get so hung up on what's changed with the new Corvette that they don't focus on what stayed the same. The C8 remains a V8-powered, rear-drive, plastic-body two-seater that's built and designed in America. To me, that sounds like a Corvette. So what are my thoughts on the dream racing experience itself? Would I recommend it? Clearly, both Athena and I had an amazing time. If you want to see more of Athena's race experience in the Aston Martin Vantage, check out her Instagram here. How do you feel? Man, that was fast. I am shaking. <laughs> My only real quibble with Dream Racing is their optional onboard camera telemetry package that you see here. 
Look closely and you'll notice that the speed is displayed in kilometers per hour, not miles per hour. I checked to see if they could change this, but this is just how it is. Beyond that, the only real negative to Dream Racing is cost. But Dream Racing's rates are competitive with similar driving experiences. And Dream Racing already includes insurance in their price, which can be an optional and expensive extra at competing experiences. And Dream Racing is still very safe. In the 10 years they've been open, they've never had a single injury. But I think their biggest appeal is their unrivaled selection of cars, and that's a great opportunity to stretch your dollar. While their most expensive exotics start at $550, their mid-tier cars like the ones we drove are a relative bargain at 300 bucks each. And if you're willing to stoop to something as plebeian as a lowly Supra, Maserati, or Porsche Cayman, you're racing for only 200 bucks. I would recommend spending the extra 80 bucks for the onboard telemetry video like we did. Yes, even with that kilometer per hour graphic that you can't change. Change. Your senses will be so overwhelmed during your drive that you'll be thankful for the video to relive the experience later. I'd also recommend adding a few more laps than the basic five. Those five laps went by in a blur. By the time we were really starting to get the hang of the track and the car, it was regrettably time to pit. But here's the out the door cost for the exact experience that I ran in just the Corvette. With the standard five laps plus the onboard video, the total was a tad over $400. The Aston Martin was the same price, so double that if you want to do both. Like I said, not exactly cheap, but if you're a car enthusiast, it's worth saving up for. After all, science has shown that experiences are going to make you happier than things. And there's nothing quite like the experience of driving as fast as you can in someone else's new exotic car on an open track like this. All right, that's my review on the Dream Racing Experience and the C8, so now let's hear from you. What do you think of the C8 Corvette? Have you ever been to one of these driving experiences? And if so, what did you think of it? Was it worth the cost? Let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon so you don't miss more Retro Cars Forever racing to you real soon. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.